This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Heavenly Life by James Allen Chapter 3 The Original Simplicity Life is simple. Being is simple. The universe is simple. Complexity arises in ignorance and self-delusion. The, quote, original simplicity of Lao Tzu is a term expressive of the universe as it is and not as it appears. Looking through the woven network of his own illusions, man sees interminable complications and unfathomable mystery and so loses himself in the labyrinths of his own making. Let a man put away egotism, and he will see the universe in all the beauty of its pristine simplicity. Let him annihilate the delusion of the personal pronoun I, and he will destroy all the illusions which spring from that I. He will thus re-become a little child, and will revert to original simplicity. When a man succeeds in entirely forgetting, annihilating his personal self, he becomes a mirror in which the universal reality is faultlessly reflected. He is awakened, and henceforth he lives, not in dreams, but in realities. Pythagoras saw the universe in the ten numbers, but even this simplicity may be further reduced, and the universe ultimately be found to be contained in the number one. For all the numerals and all their infinite complications are but additions of the one. Let life cease to be lived as a fragmentary thing, and let it be lived as a perfect whole. The simplicity of the perfect will then be revealed. How shall the fragment comprehend the whole? Yet how simple that the whole should comprehend the fragment? How shall sin perceive holiness? Yet how plain that holiness should understand sin? He who would become the greater, let him abandon the lesser. In no form is the circle contained, but in the circle all forms are contained. In no color is the radiant light imprisoned, but in the radiant light all colors are embodied. Let a man destroy all the forms of self, and he shall apprehend the circle of perfection. Let him submerge in the silent depths of his being the varying colors of his thoughts and desires, and he shall be illuminated with the white light of divine knowledge. In the perfect chord of music, the single note, though forgotten, is indispensably contained, and the drop of water becomes of supreme usefulness by losing itself in the ocean. Sink yourself compassionately in the heart of humanity, and you will reproduce the harmonies of heaven. Lose yourself in unlimited love toward all, and you will work enduring works, and shall become one with the eternal ocean of bliss. Man evolves outward to the periphery of complexity, and then devolves backward to the central simplicity. When a man discovers that it is mathematically impossible for him to know the universe before knowing himself, then he starts upon the way which leads to the original simplicity. He begins to unfold from within, and as he unfolds himself, he enfolds the universe. Cease to speculate about God, and find the all-embracing good within you. Then you shall see the emptiness and vanity of speculation, knowing yourself one with God. He who will not give up his secret lust, his covetousness, his anger, his opinion about this or that, can see nor know nothing. He will remain a dullard in the school of wisdom, though he be accounted learned in the colleges. If a man would find the key of knowledge, let him find himself. Your sins are not yourself, they are not any part of yourself. They are diseases which you have come to love. Cease to cling to them, and they will no longer cling to you. Let them fall away, and yourself shall stand revealed. You shall then know yourself as comprehensive vision, invincible principle, immortal life, and eternal good. The impure man believes impurity to be his rightful condition, but the pure man knows himself as pure being. He also 
penetrating the veils, sees all others as pure being. Purity is extremely simple and needs no argument to support it. Impurity is interminably complex and is ever involved in defensive argument. Truth lives itself. A blameless life is the only witness of truth. Men cannot see and will not accept the witness until they find it within themselves, and having found it, a man becomes silent before his fellows. Truth is so simple that it cannot be found in the region of argument and advertisement, and so silent that it is only manifested in actions. So extremely simple is original simplicity that a man must let go his hold of everything before he can perceive it. The great arch is strong by virtue of the hollowness underneath, and a wise man becomes strong and invincible by emptying himself. Meekness, patience, love, compassion, and wisdom, these are the dominant qualities of original simplicity. Therefore, the imperfect cannot understand it. Wisdom only can apprehend wisdom. Therefore, the fool says, no man is wise. The imperfect man says, no man can be perfect, and he therefore remains where he is. Though he live with a perfect man all his life, he shall not behold his perfection. Meekness he will call cowardice, patience, love, and compassion he will see as weakness, and wisdom will appear to him as folly. Faultless discrimination belongs to the perfect whole and resides not in any part. Therefore, men are exhorted to refrain from judgment until they have themselves manifested the perfect life. Arriving at original simplicity, opacity disappears and the universal transparency becomes apparent. He who has found the indwelling reality of his own being has found the original and universal reality. Knowing the divine heart within, all hearts are known, and the thoughts of all men become his who has become the master of his own thoughts. Therefore, the good man does not defend himself, but molds the minds of others to his own likeness. As the problematical transcends crudity, so pure goodness transcends the problematical. All problems vanish when pure goodness is reached. Therefore, the good man is called the slayer of illusions. What problem can vex where sin is not. O you who would strive loudly and rest not, retire into the holy silence of your own being and live therefrom. So shall you, finding pure goodness, rend in twain the veil of the temple of illusion and shall enter into the patience, peace, and transcendent glory of the perfect, for pure goodness and original simplicity are one. End of chapter 3